Hi, Gary Fong here. I'm just going to give you a few suggestions for um, setting up your camera for the best creative and uh, 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 consistency results. Now, a lot of these cameras uh, come out with these uh, completely automatic settings, and those those are okay probably for most um, purposes. However, um, as a professional photographer, there's certain things that you want to override to make sure that you get the best results. And so, uh, I'm going to show you some of the settings that uh, a guy like me would use in uh, shooting an event for for the best um, uh, consistency and creativity. To understand. Uh, now you can go to auto, which basically takes care of everything, but what I don't like about that is it overrides a bunch of things that you could do creatively. Um, so a uh, professional photographer like myself will typically want to have a little bit more options and that's actually available in program auto so we'll go to program auto and I'm gonna to go to function key here and this is really neat this is the shooting function meter and then the first thing I'll do is I'll go to creative style now creative style typically comes uh, with a camera set to standard and standard usually augments or increases the uh, saturation and the uh, contrast which is probably not so good if you're a wedding photographer, a professional photographer doing portraits or whatever, because you want you can always increase uh, color and saturation later in Lightroom or Photoshop or Aperture, uh, but you can't decrease it. For example, if you have high contrast and you're shooting a cake cutting, uh, it'll make the whites whiter, and therefore you might lose detail in the cake. Under portrait, uh, you'll actually have lower uh, contrast. It'll look very, very realistic, and you'll be able to, if you want later to give it more punch, you can increase the color or the saturation. So we're just going to go there, and then um, also under function, we're going to go to autofocus area. And uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. No, we'll go down to metering mode. This is really important. Autofocus, of course, is just a complete uh, personal choice, uh, but. Let's talk about multi-segment versus, this is called center-weighted, and this is called spot. Now, we want to avoid spot in most situations unless you're in, like, say, for example, severe backlight, uh, and then even then you got to keep in your mind, uh, put a sticky note on your head or something like that, that you're on spot, because spot is dangerous. What happens is it'll, it'll only meter the center. So say, for example, a person's got a black shirt on, that spot meter is going to go right in the middle and then take that black shirt and try to turn it middle gray, which is the average exposure that it wants for a photo, and that's no good. Uh, if we go to center, it's kind of the same thing where the the center third of the meter will be more uh, looked at than any other part of the image and so if you have say someone with a white shirt it'll look at the center and say "Ooh, this white shirt should be middle gray and so therefore we're going to darken the whole thing and make the faces too dark multi-segment is very very advanced it's an evaluative system where the camera tries to figure out what you're going to do now it's not perfect in all cases but it's perfect in a lot of cases and especially when you have low contrast low saturation multi-segment is going to get you um, most often the most uh, pleasing overall results now with regards to the uh, flash oh, let's see white balance white balance should be an auto uh, most of the time because it's really good for Sony I'll talk about uh, custom white balance in, in just a little bit and so that's basically it now as for ISO um, we like to keep the ISO at uh, let's just see if I can get it get to it here uh, let's see image size that's completely up to you uh, oh color space um, that's uh, interesting uh, topic there. Uh, color space can either be sRGB or Adobe RGB. Now you'll read on a lot of places Adobe RGB is uh, wider, has more information. That's all true. However, if you're going to make prints, uh, like at any photo lab or anything like that, you'll find that your sRGB uh, is outside of the range of Adobe RGB, so your reds uh, will, won't look as vibrant. They'll look like tomato red and everything like that. So, uh, in short, most of the time, go to sRGB. Your monitors on your computers are typically sRGB. Um, Adobe RGB is only for press work or inkjet or things like that, um, but in most situations, sRGB is the way to go. Now, for your ISO, um, ISO, we like to be indoors at 800. Outdoors, we'd like to be at 100. And the reason is, is because outdoors, uh, we like to have um, a lot of, uh, you know, if you have uh, a large uh, aperture lens or something like that, it'll give you more depth of field or more selective focus. And then it's also uh, 
much safer. Uh, now you could put this thing on ISO auto, but that's probably not that great of an idea because what it'll do is it'll go for a safe standard and it won't be as creative. ISO 100 is what I shoot when I'm outdoors. ISO 800 is what I shoot when I'm indoors. And 800 on any camera that's newer than four years old is pretty noiseless. And uh, the benefits that you get from shooting at ISO 800 are that you get faster recycle times on your flash, you'll get uh, less camera shake, on your camera and um, you'll get uh, just overall um, a much more pleasing photo if you're shooting flash. Now um, on your flash, this is the Sony HV uh, model, um, we want to put the mode in TTL and then uh, this is TTL, let me just turn the light on so you can see it better, this is TTL, TTL mode and then um, we don't want to go plus or minus override on the power, we want to keep it exactly on the natural TTL. Now this button right here says high, high speed sync and that's kind of cool when you're shooting um, say outdoors at ISO 100 this will take the sync up to very very higher speed uh, ISO 100 or something like that. In uh, program mode I'm gonna hit this right button over here the flash and then we're going to select uh, up here fill flash. Uh, fill flash is great for this and um, when you have the flash on of course so just go ahead and go like that and you should be set. Now I want to explain to you this amber test light here. When I take a picture, watch this, it will blink green three times and then go back to amber. Now that blinking three times is your TTL verification light. It tells you that the exposure is okay. Um, so if you're shooting a wedding and you're shooting group photos or something like that and it looks dark on the screen, beware, it might be just that your screen's turned down to dark. Um, the way to verify is the OK light. If it blinks three times, that means, yep, we got the right exposure. With these settings, you should have very, very consistent results and uh, on your uh, Sony uh, SLR. Okay, thanks.